You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the the freedom to direct your health care not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures. Saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. America, happy Thursday. This is Jen and Rick. We are live right now on KLRMradio.com, and we do this thing every Thursday night at uh, 9, what is it, 10 p.m. Eastern? Sorry, I'm in Central Time, so Eastern always confuses me, but the station guru says we have to give Eastern Time. So every once in a while when you had like a long day and done like four jobs, you kind of was like, okay, is it, uh, yeah, it's at an hour. Okay, so we're good. But yeah, so today's been kind of hectic for me. I did the regular job, then I went and hung out at the other station for a minute, learned how they do a few things, and then came home and dealt with dinner, and then started getting stuff prepped for the show after. So if I seem a little frantic, I have a reason. With that, and I still really don't feel all that great, because my allergies are killing me. But anyway, now that I've whined for like a minute, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, not... Not near as much to say about how my week's been going. <laughs> the only good thing about being sick is I kind of was off, like, Twitter for, like, four days. Really, I mean, you know, other than, like, necessary communication, I really wasn't interacting much on timeline and wasn't listening to all the craziness. And then last night I made the mistake after the show. While I was editing, I kept flipping back over to Twitter. And I was I was just done. I was I was like, you know what? <laughs> because the thing that I don't get, you know, and and maybe I'm wrong and maybe I just missed it. Because in the circles that I ran in, we didn't do the whole, you know, Obama's a Kenyan, never should have been president. You know, I flirted with that idea once and then I did some research and realized that whoever came up with that idea was a moron. And guess what? Apparently it was Hillary Clinton that came up with that idea. No matter how much they try to throw it back at President Trump, she was the first one to point out that she didn't necessarily think that he should be running for president because of the status of his father uh now that being said there's been some interesting things going on on twitter lately because you know the uh the the uh the whole russia scandal story has jumped the blue donkey shark because now the only proof that we seem to find of anything going on weird with russia is apparently they had lots of really large following accounts um that were all over twitter on both sides of a lot of different arguments and the only links that they can find other than that seem to all go back to a certain presidential candidate who was not Donald Trump. Yeah, so I've been kind of trying to chase this. I, I, it's Good kind luck. of a web, maybe a maze. I don't know. I've like someone would say, "Oh yeah, here was this thing," and then, "Oh no, no, no!" But you have to read this thing, and then, "Oh, did you hear about that?" And so it's been a little bit hard in the middle of the day today <laughs> to kind of follow it all. But um, I do want to say that I think there were a lot of us that were thinking all along, and some of us actually outright said it that like they should be really careful what they're wishing for here. And when they go digging, what they're going to find. 
Well, yeah, we all knew it. I mean, come on. Hillary Clinton was the one that made the huge Russian deal that gave them all kinds of uranium from this country. We knew the, what we knew at least some of what they were going to find. And look, I still want to know the truth. If the if the Trump campaign was somehow mixed up in something to do with the Russians, I honestly want to know the answer to that. Not necessarily because I want anybody to get you know, in any kind of trouble, but I want to figure out how to fix it to make sure that kind of crap doesn't happen again. Because, you know, and because here's part of what bugs me about it, because we're all upset because there's somebody that apparently somehow found a way to get in the middle of our election. But let's face it, we do that crap all the time. It's, it's only a matter of time, especially with as weak and as feckless as the Obama administration was for eight years, no matter what the little memes tell you about what a great job that he did. Um, it's only a matter of time before another country started trying to probe us and figure out where our weaknesses were. And that's exactly what they've done. I mean, the best case scenario here is you had a bunch of people paying for trolls that managed to inflame arguments on both sides. The worst case scenario is there was at least one campaign and maybe even two campaigns that were hip deep in this somehow. I just want to know the truth. Whatever that truth is, we will have to deal with it. But I just want to know what it is. Because if the Hillary Clinton campaign was hip deep in this, then we need to find a way to make sure that if they, especially if they did something illegal, that there's there's something that we do about that. If the Trump campaign had done anything illegal and untoward with Russia, then I want to know that too, because we need to know the truth. That's part of what's driving me crazy with all the media and all the hype and all the ho and all the crap is that nobody really cares about the truth anymore. It's what kind of headline can I put on this thing to make sure a million people click it even if they only read the first sentence because I got a million people to click it. Well, yeah, but that, that's how it always goes. I mean, but it shouldn't. <laughs> that's part of what drives well, me crazy about all of it is the sensationalism you know that's not what journalism was intended for and I understand folks I am not a journalist I've never pretended to be a journalist I have friends who are journalists and I have friends who have moved into talk radio that still consider themselves journalists I am not a journalist but as someone who has always kind of followed journalism and actually at one point had had this crazy idea that I was going to be a journalist you know back in my teen years when I had no idea what I was doing. How I went from uh, journalism to seminary to uh, law enforcement type work, I'm, I'm not sure how you, I mean, I guess in my youth, I must have just bounced around like a pinball. Oh, this seems like a good idea. Let's go try this. Oh, that kind of sucks. Let's go over here. Um, but, you know, it, it just, I just, it, it, journalism used to mean something. It doesn't anymore. That's like that tweet that you put out earlier today from, I don't even remember what site that was. And you're like, this like reads like some angry blog. And I'm just like, oh, well. it, was, it was, yeah, it was daily costs. It was daily costs. And I, I have not, I, I, I do tend to read a lot of things. And by the way, like anybody listening, if you're, you, you probably have let us go by now if you're like so hardcore Trumper that you can't see straight about even things about reading leftist media. But every now and then I'll get those people that are like, oh, you know, I can't believe you read that and there's no reasonable. Well, yeah, there is because since, you know, the leftist media controls so much of the narrative and they are the most readily available and consumed media is typically left leaning. Um, I, I do like to read pieces in Vox, pieces on Slate, you know, in Salon. I don't, I, and actually, wait, let, back up, back up. I don't like to, I don't like them, but I like to be informed and to know what um, they are saying. And I like to, I like to be able to compare, you know, a more factual article with one of their more opinion and kind of manipulating, uh, the, um, the situation articles are. Um, and so that's why I was reading this today. And I went, you know, I think this is why I stopped reading that one. I'd read, there are plenty of other left leaning publications that are at least, Res like written in a respectable manner and um, just, uh, yeah, or at least well written. And this was seriously like it was someone's. Remember back in the day, like, you know, you could like blog on MySpace or I don't know, people had like Zanga or like stuff like that. And it was, it was like a big block of stuff and it was kind of all together and people kind of wrote to it like a diary and, 
this was what that seemed like. It was so unprofessional, in my opinion. It was very juvenile, and the writing was just not good in general. It was just not good, but it was just filled with all sorts of anger and everything, and uh, I was just dying laughing. I was like, this reads like a really bad blog, but it was a premiere article that Daily Cost was putting out and that then was featured on their site at, on the front page at the top for almost the entire day. So, uh, but doesn't Daily Cost in general just kind of read like an angry blog? I guess I'm just just saying I hadn't really because I read so many other publications. Instead, I hadn't clicked on one of their links in a long time, but that just happened to come through my feed, so I did and started reading it and was like, "This, I, I mean, whose ex girlfriend is this?" I, you know what I mean? It just had that like bitter, angry, mean sound to it. And it was crazy. And then, of course, there was the thing at the top that had a button where that you could click on to submit a comment and your name that they will be sending to President Trump. And uh, it said, you know, send an angry note. It didn't just say, like, let him know what you think or tell him what's on your mind about this or tell him he was wrong about this. It said, send an angry note. And I died laughing. I thought that was just, I'm like, these people are so ridiculous. Just so utterly ridiculous. So are you trying to say that, you know, based on the article, you have the the, the standing assumption that the writer of this article probably has resting Grinch face? Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, just checking. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't really have much of a chance to look at it, but I was kind of enthralled by the comments that were going on in your little thread there. It was kind of it, that that that's kind of the more entertaining thing for me. But you know, uh, it, it, it was just funny. Yeah, it's just the whole thing is just crazy to me because I mean, that's like I was telling you last, last night, right before I just finally decided, you know what, I, I've I've been on here enough. I'm going to bed. Uh, I I was going through and I was finding comments from people that were like, you know, can we just trade out with the North Korean guy because he's got to be better than Trump. I'm thinking. That dude is letting people starve to the point where they are they are eating recently deceased dead relatives to survive, and you think that being under him is going to be better than Trump? I just the the and again I, and again you know just like I said last night he wasn't even like my twenty seventh choice. We didn't even even have twenty seven people in the race, but that that's how far down on the list he was for me because he was the last guy that I wanted to see as president. But these whole the whole resist thing, and you know he's not my president. Um, well, did you suddenly renounce your citizenship and move to Canada while we were asleep, like you said you were going to? Because otherwise, he's still your president. I hate to burst your bubble, but yeah. <sighs> right. I well, I mean, it's so silly that they think that well, they can. I guess be, I really don't could... hate to burst their bubble, but that, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, well. I would like to burst their bubble because they are all living in about five or six, you know, like it's a bubble inside a bubble inside a bubble inside a bubble. And, uh, you know, it may, maybe if they just, maybe if we just popped like one or two of them, they would come around to a little bit of, uh, to, I, I don't join the real world just for maybe a day or two. I don't know, but they are, they're completely bubble wrapped. I mean, insanely so. You know, I, and I think that's one of the things that I like when you, you know, when you start talking about the fact that you actually like to get your news from multiple sources and you'll read through uh, left-leaning as well as right-leaning and centrist po uh, places. I mean, don't don't let her lie to you, folks. She reads all the things, but that's part of what makes her good as a co-host, and it's one of the things that I usually actually even try to do, and I've gotten heat from it before too because they're like why are you reading that leftist rag like well you need to understand their perspective if you're going to combat it but the interesting thing is they've gotten so angry they really don't even seem to have a perspective anymore um one of the things that i noticed that i definitely wanted to make sure that we brought up today was ever since they did the ouster at the dnc there have been some major like weird shakeups going on there like the fact that they've officially ousted their first transgen transgender DNC member, who also happened to be lesbian, Jewish, and a veteran. How many demographics do you think they pissed off in that one firing? <laughs> <laughs> like their entire base. I mean, or at least things that their base supports <laughs> on on at at least the 
pretty left leading. Anything beyond a moderate dim is going to uh, be pretty heavy on on all of those. But uh, I I saw a little bit about that too, and I thought, "Who? This is not a good look." You know, on the day when um, George W. Bush comes out and has this really eloquent speech and denounces bigotry and racism, and um, you know, encourages us to uh, basically just be normal freaking humans to each other. Uh, the DNC, it's coming out that the DNC is going through this, which I found a little bit funny. Also, really, like, spare me leftists with this, like, whole George, George Bush is such a good man crap and acting like for some reason, like, you knew it all along that he was, you know, uh, had a good heart and I knew his I knew his you know intentions were in the right place even if I didn't agree with his policies and blah 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 blah. No, you didn't. You called him Hitler, you called him a warmonger, you called him a murderer, you told him he had blood on his hands, and you berated him to death every single freaking day. You said the same things about him that you're saying about Trump now and you had much, much less to go on. So but Shut yes, it. well, no, I honestly think right now they're being honest because he's been away from office long enough that they can actually say what they truly felt all along, but their dogmatic view of politics wouldn't allow them to say it back then. Because let's face it, they act as a group. They are a, they are groupthink. A lot of them, I mean, especially, I mean, with as much time as you spend on leftist leaning sites you have to have noticed it too one of them gets a talking point and suddenly they all have the same talking point it's like it goes out everywhere on blast and it's like blah 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 blah. and it's like the same thing almost word for word because it's like they're nothing but this huge herd so i mean i i don't i don't necessarily think i th they're being disingenuous now definitely but i don't necessarily think they're being dishonest now i think they were being dishonest before and they were simply attacking him because he's not the guy on their side. Because, I mean, look at all the things, all the crazy, crazy, crazy things that Obama did for the last eight years. And they were all fine with it. And now that there's not a Republican, now that there's not a Democrat in office anymore, he's the worst guy ever. Now, I have to admit, they're at least 50% right on this guy. Because he is just kind of, I mean, he's a brash, loudmouth, arrogant New Yorker. We've never really had a brash, arrogant, loudmouth New Yorker as president before. I'm not quite sure the country was was ready for it. It reminds me of a slightly less tame version of JD being the president. <laughs> I'm not sure we were ever ready for that. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I mean, that's actually really funny. But but is it not an is it not an accurate description? You've seen JD when he gets angry. They don't, New Yorkers don't have filters. You push a button, it's gone. It's nuclear in thirty seconds, and they don't hold back. They tell you exactly what they think, and they're I mean, and they're they're just they're just those type of people. The whole the whole state is like, I will go out in the parking lot, beat the crap out of you, and then we'll walk in and have a beer. That's just, you know, and, and that's not only a New Yorker thing, but it's for the most part a guy thing too. But, you know, the thing with the president with that, he doesn't have an off switch for it. And, I mean, and and the, what, what, what saddens me is even when he tries to be, you know, and sound presidential, it's like somebody slipped him a volume. And I know CNN has said that before, and I'm not trying to f fuel them with anything about tr somebody trying to keep him drugged or anything. I'm just saying when he tries to act subdued, it doesn't even seem like him. Uh, and I'm because that's uh, that's all we've ever seen is the brash animated guy because that's what he figured out that's how he figured out that he was going to be able to get people's attention and unfortunately in some ways we have created a monster because now that he has everybody's attention he doesn't want to give it up so anytime he can he's out pushing buttons the scary thing about the way that he pushes buttons though because it works my nerves the way this man gets on twitter but what he seems to always manage to do in the weirdest, most circumspect way is draw out a bunch of crazy people because he'll put something out on Twitter that they will slam him about for days upon days upon days. And then time passes and we usually find out that even though he said it in the worst way possible, half of what he said was true, which is really kind of weird. Yeah, I, I, his delivery is just horrific. And I do agree with you when he is not just speaking the way that 
you know, he would prefer to and maybe not quite as scripted or whatever, it it does fall a little flat. I think that there have been a few times for me where it hasn't, where I've thought actually that was really good and it was apparent that not only was he scripted, but um, that he had rehearsed so that he inflected better, you know, and just had, had the right tone. And one of those was that UN speech I thought was really good. Um, it had the right amount of somberness to it, but then also, you know, it hit some points pretty hard and he got a little bit more passion in his voice and whatever. But, you know, this is, it, it's interesting that he has been a businessman and an entertainer, and you know that he has given hundreds of thousands of presentations, probably thousands and thousands of presentations. You know that he's made all sorts of speeches at all kinds of conventions and everything. And then, of course, then he had a TV show. So it, it is interesting to me, though, that he never really uh, kind of, I don't know, um, got comfortable with or maybe just rejected it but with 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 public speaking and and with speech in particular of of when you're addressing somebody um and different audiences and how you change that for your audiences i don't know it's kind of interesting i think that he absolutely has it has the training and everything but i think maybe because of how well it worked during the campaigns and everything that he just doesn't feel the need to do it even when it's not just at a rally I don't know. It's kind of strange. Only very rarely will he will he do an actual, you know, more memorized and scripted and on, you know, straight on the line type speech. But it uh, he definitely revs people up when he's not doing that. Yeah, I mean, you know, and but, you know, this goes back to what we started opening the show about. It, it's time for us to realize that, you know, we can not like the guy. Because, you know, there are plenty of things that he says and does that I don't like. We can think that he's not the best president ever because he, he you know, only history will tell. But it's time to stop with the petty BS bickering and the Hillary should be president and the Electoral College is a sham. Because, and this is, I guess, what drives me crazy about the whole face of that argument. The same people that are telling us that the Electoral College shouldn't exist because if not for the Electoral College, Hillary Clinton would be president of the United States right now, are the same ones that are okay with the Democratic Party having superdelegates, which is basically just another version of the Electoral College. Where, if not for those superdelegates, it probably would have been Donald Trump versus Bernie Sanders, and who knows what the results of that election would have been. Ooh, I don't want to think about that. I don't really want to think about it either. But, but if I mean, if, if you're going to scream and yell about the Electoral College, then maybe you should clean up the mess in your own party first so that there's actually a true representation of who should have been the leader of your ballot. Because based on everybody that I've talked to, after the DNC primary, or after the DNC convention, they really, really, really wanted Bernie Sanders to the point where a good portion of those delegates walked out to the point where they started putting up white noise machines so people couldn't hear the folks chanting outside that Bernie was robbed to the point where they started busing in people to fill in all the empty seats. I remember seeing the Craigslist ad where they were actually offering to pay people to come in and fill a seat in the convention. That stuff is supposed to be closed. You've got to go through all kinds of vetting to even get credentials for that kind of stuff to even be on the floor. I know because JD and Stacey had to go through it to get it for the RNC. But it was so bad, so many people left that they're like putting out Craigslist ads in the area. We've got empty seats at the convention. Please come help us fill them. We'll pay you 50 bucks. And everybody called me a liar. And I'm like, no, look, I'm serious. And I screen captured it. And they're like, oh, you just Photoshopped that. I was like, here's the link. Go look for yourself. I'm not going to go look. I, well, then I can't help you. But but that that's how bad this was for them. And that's why they're going through this meltdown and everything that they're going through right now. They're just as mad about the person that's running the DNC right now as they were about everything that was going on with Hillary, Hillary Clinton because they wanted some they wanted somebody else to be running the DNC right now. But he he's now the number two running the DNC, not the number one running the DNC. And that's why a lot of the more uh, left-leaning folks inside the DNC are really, really mad right now about all the choices that are happening from the guy at the top of the ticket because he's the one ousting all these people. And they're like, 
you're you're like throwing all of us really really super liberal folks under the bus and off the team what are you doing and he's like well i'm trying to unify everybody because we didn't win and they're like well how are you gonna win without us he's like i don't know but we're gonna try I mean, he didn't really say any of that, but I'm pretty sure there was a conversation pretty similar to that going on at some point. Because it, it's just, they, they're going through a complete and total identity crisis. Say what you want about the right, because we are fractured, and I will freely admit that we are fractured, but at least we're not throwing people off the bus. Yeah, and you know, it's only getting worse. I, I think it's only going to get worse for the DNC. Um, I think, you know, Wasserman Schultz has been in, in hot water, you know, now all the recent stuff today, you talked about the guy who's kicked out, um, that, oh, that wasn't the are, only one they've kicked like five or six out. There's like a whole well, article about all the people that have been removed. The one that caught right. everybody's attention. Was the main the, one is the one, yeah, that they're making a stink about. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, the whole thing's crazy to me. But I'm just saying, I mean, here we are, just like bits and bits and pieces. And you know, I think that they thought they were going to really be able to like pull together with this whole resist thing. And I honestly think that quite a few of them did not expect that Trump would still be in office right now. I mean, I just really think that some of them thought that. I think they were so deluded it, about... um you know, him having done something wrong or would have done something wrong by now, even if it wasn't the Russia stuff, even if they couldn't prove that, they were just so sure that there would have been something that would be impeachable right now. And if there wasn't, they would make it up and they would bully the Republicans into going along with it. And, you know, I, I think people were just completely insane and deluded by everything. And then, uh, you know, you add into it that um, I don't think that the Hillary side of the DNC, the Hillary supporters, I don't, I think that they severely underestimated the issues that they had within the DNC and how, um, how problematic all of that was that went down between her and Bernie and how those people are so very fractured off from them in a lot of ways, at least within the Democratic Party politically, not necessarily leftism, but within the Democratic Party, I mean, like they don't want anything to do with the Hillary people and they feel utterly cheated to the point of where I'm seeing Bernie bros practically outright support Trump because they're just still so annoyed at all the people that – you know, they feel like screwed Bernie over in order to have the queen be the nominee. And then she doesn't even, you know, she's not even able to capitalize on it. So it's just, it's a real interesting state of affairs in politics right now. It's just on both sides. Yeah, you know, you, you brought up an interesting point with the Bernie bros. Because, you know, you got Bernie bros supporting Trump. You got conservatives supporting, or supposed conservatives, still supporting Hillary because they're still never... Trump and then you have the whole ter Trump derangement syndrome crowd because look folks I again I admit it I am not a million percent pleased or anything that this guy is president right now especially after watching or seeing bits and pieces because I actually forgot it was on or I would have recorded it went back and watched it later the debate between Sanders and Cruz last night hearing Cruz just beat the crap out of Uncle Speedo verbally it reminded me of what we could have had as president and yet we have this guy but on that note we've got to take a really quick break when we come back there's a really interesting group that is suddenly trying to self-segregate or as they call reverse uh migration uh for the african-american community they want eight states all their own you'll never guess where they want them though it's kind of interesting we'll be right back here in about yeah, four minutes Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. 
healthcare, freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your healthcare, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your healthcare while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Executive producer fail. Welcome back, folks. This is Jen and Rick, and apologies for that about 20 seconds of dead air there. I hit the wrong button. But we are back, and actually, I had planned on bringing up a topic because I had it, and now my computer's being crazy, and I'm not even sure if you know what I'm talking about. So, um, but anyway, so it came across my screen last night because, you know, it was in one of the groups that we were in. And sadly, I can't remember the name of the group now, but they have started this crazy idea where they want, um, because they have, well, first of all, their math was wrong. They said, you know, African-Americans are like 16.8% of the population. If you use the numbers from their own articles, they're about 11.3% of the population, but I haven't really gone back to check um, to see what the actual numbers are. But based on their own stuff, their math was wrong. But they are actually wanting to start a... You can't even really call it a coalition because even they admit that 
they can't really do anything outside of the federal government because it's illegal because you know ever since the civil war there's like all these things in place that you know that everybody that's in pretty much has to stay in um which uh the only state that i know of that may still have an out for that and that is questionable is texas because they used to have built into their constitution the ability to gtfo anytime they wanted um depending on which history books you look at that's either still an option for them or it's been overridden by all the crap that we went through with the Civil War. Since I'm not a Texan, I really don't know. But what I do know is there is this group of African Americans that have now decided they want eight states. Most of which actually happen to be the former Confederate states. And they want to move themselves down there. They're not, at first, going to be asking anybody to leave. They just want to be able to form a coalition of predominantly black folks... So they can have their own representation and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know what? It's a free country. Y'all can pretty much do whatever you want. But the fact that so many of your ancestors, and in some cases even some of my ancestors, because some of my ancestors have been here for a long time, fought to make you guys free to get you to the point where you could make your own choices, just for you to eventually decide that you wanted to tuck tail, run back down, and resegregate yourselves, because no matter what you want to call it, it's, seg it's segregation. That's what it is. I understand it's different because you want to do it now, but that's still what it is. And to me, that flies in the face of everything that our ancestors fought, bled, and died for. It also flies in the face of everything that Martin Luther King fought, bled, and eventually died for. And again, you guys can do what you want. And I'm just an old fat white guy, so what the hell do you care about my opinion? But as somebody that actually used to, has actually studied Martin Luther King, I can tell you if he were alive today, he would be punching every single one of you in the nets. Just saying. Well, it's just so silly. Like, what? I'm sorry. So we fought for all of these things, and you know we've we've worked so hard to, um, as a people, to, you know, kind of leave this kind of thinking behind of us versus them. And I know it still exists. And I know that, but here you've got uh, entire communities and, you know, there are other people that are like that too. Um, there are smaller groups that are like this of other nationalities and types of things like that, but that, that also kind of propose being segregated, not to this extent, but it, it's been talked about before, but I, why? I mean, so what you're saying is you didn't really want all of the, like, once you got those things, you didn't want them anymore. You know, it, I, I don't know what they hope to achieve by this, by, by self-segregation and by trying to um, kind of make themselves, um, I, I don't I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's so it's so bizarre. It's such a it's such a strange concept to me that it's it's just really hard to fathom that there are people that legitimately want this. And the worst thing is, you know, these aren't is like you said, these aren't the only ones. There are people that want to even though they don't necessarily want to go to the extent where they like move and just, you know, form their own little African American coalition of states, and I honestly don't remember what they were gonna call it, but you might as well just call it that. Um there are people that want, you know, their own black communities. They want their own black police force. They want black banks. They want a black version of money. So they basically want everything that the government used to make them take and shove it down their throat sideways even after they became free. They want that all for themselves. The only reason apparently they didn't want it before was because somebody was making them do it. But now that they can do it themselves, oh, it's all great. That's exactly what we should do. Because then, you know, black people will be represented properly. There'll be black police officers. There'll be black money. There'll be black banks. We'll have everything the white folks have except it'll be for us. So I, I just, I, and again, I'm just an old angry white guy. I get it. But this goes all through me because... This is not what this country is about. This country has always been about coming together. And I understand that it took us a long time to get there, and it wasn't always about that. But it became about that. We looked at all of the things that happened in our past, and we realized we didn't want those things to happen anymore. So we found ways to talk about them. We found ways to get past them. We talked about it through literature, movies, 
big books, news stories, whatever the case may be, whatever it took to get it out and get people to talk about it. But now we don't even want to talk about it. All we want to do is yell and scream about it. And all we want to do is say, well, because I think that our my ancestors were treated unfairly. I think we should get these eight states down here and y'all should basically just leave us the hell alone. Look, honestly, if you think you can make that work, then by all means, more power to you. But the thing the thing about it is, and this is one of the things that I, I kept trying to get across to these folks last night when I had like almost a 45 minute long conversation with them back and forth on open timeline, is you, you're not understanding because what happens every single time that there's a group that comes up that used to be oppressed that is not oppressed anymore, they start trying to oppress others. Case in point, the Black Lives Matter movement. I played audio for weeks when they were getting their rallies together and stuff where they started saying things that were rather ominous that nobody else was really talking about, like people with bullhorns. Thank you for all you white people coming here to support us, but as of now, move to the back of the line. All the black people move up front. That was going on over and over and over again because they had decided in this instance they were the power group and they wanted the white people to understand what it felt like to be the not powerful group. And that is not... I repeat, not what this country is supposed to be about. That's why I laughed my ass off at the Tiki Torch morons, because that's not what this country was about either. We fought fascism. We fought Nazism. Now we have it running rampant on both sides, and everybody's just like, ah, yeah, it's cool, because that's what they want to believe, and we should just leave them alone and let them believe whatever they want to believe. No, because it's harmful to this country. We used to understand this. Ideas like this can't be allowed to thrive. And I'm not saying that we go out and shoot people or kill them or anything else. But I'm saying we need to make people understand that these ideas are the antithesis of everything that this country stands for. And if you stand for them, then you need to figure out whether you want to be here or not. Because we are not going to have those things in this country. We understood that before. I don't understand where we've lost it. Maybe I'm the one that's lost it. Maybe I really am just the old cranky white guy who doesn't understand how the new kids think. But I know that everything that we're seeing right now is stuff that we have gone through before. And part of the reason why we're going through it again is because we've started having this concept of whitewashing our history. And I know nobody likes that word, but that's exactly what we're doing. To the point now where we're arguing over where statues should be placed. It, it, Give me just a second. I promise I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking. The, the reason I bring this up is because the wife and I have been watching a show called Designated Survivor. Well, on Designated Survivor, they brought all of this to the forefront on the last episode. Well, I would say last episode, but it was actually last week's because I haven't watched last night's yet. Um, and there was actually a group that was in the White House in one of the meeting rooms. And that was what they were basically going to guns on each other about was should the statue be moved or shouldn't it be moved? A black person stood up and said everything that I've been saying, and I'm just like, I can't believe that he, because the show is pretty liberal leaning, so I was actually kind of surprised they went there. But he basically said, this statue should not be moved. Not only should this statue not be moved, it should be exactly where it is, because this is a reminder, not of everything my people have gone through, but everything that we did to overcome the things that we have gone through. And that needs to be a teachable moment. And that needs to be something that's there. And I swear, I got goosebumps because it's everything that I've been saying for weeks about all of this. And all these people that want to tuck tail and run and make their own states and do all their own things, that's great. But what are you really doing for the future of your people if you get to the point where you don't have any interaction with anybody else because you don't like the way your ancestors were treated? And what the hell did Martin Luther King die for, really? Uh-oh. I think I may have made my co-host mad. <laughs> I'm hoping I didn't. But now she's not even online. Maybe she is. Okay, so I'm going to try this and see if... I don't know. Maybe I just got fired as a co-host. Let's find out, shall we? Yep, oh, I'm thinking I may have been fired, folks. <laughs> nice! I think I got fired. <laughs> Alright, so since we seem to, I hope, be having some technical difficulties, we're going to take an unscheduled break for a couple minutes. 
Live radio, folks. Gotta love it. We'll be right back. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty HealthShare is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the free Freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. O-R-G. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of banging out All right, folks, welcome back. Well, it turns out I wasn't fired as a co-host. After all, Skype just hates us. Hey, Jen, welcome back. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, basically, I didn't even hear it hang up, and I was just talking away. <laughs> nice. What, uh, were, what were we talking about? Oh, I was on my I was on my soapbox about Martin Luther King and these stupid yes, that want to see yeah, him. and you were talking about the statues and how you know what did they you know what did Martin Luther King fight for and whatever. Well, the problem is is that you know it's not only like a question of what what did we you know what did they go through so so much for. Um, it's also that they, they want to rewrite everything in a way. So now, so now segregation's okay as long as it's, you know, self-imposed, I guess. And then the other thing is that, um, all of this judging of stuff, um, where, you know, there was a time period, if we start to judge all of history and all the peep figures from those history, from our history, um, we're in uh, times where times were different, where you know cultural norms were different, where ways of life were extremely different, um, and where and I'm not talking about the dictators. I'm not talking about the truly bad men of the world. I'm talking about your average person that lived day to day within a certain set of societal rules and norms. And uh, you know, yeah, it's very easy to look back and judge on some of these things now, and. You know, Dr. King understood that. He wasn't asking for everything to be overhauled to the point of, you know, just this ridiculous amount of restitution. He truly wanted our societies and the black and the white communities to come together to realize that we're both human beings um, and that uh, we, we can live in harmony and that we should. We should work together and we should thrive together and we should continue to build this country together. And uh, I think it does a disservice to him also to try to now judge all of these people all these figures of our history in in modern terms and uh and and set these ridiculous standards for them that they'll never be able to live up to and by the way no one does no one will and we'll have nobody left and we'll have scrapped our history in total because you can find something wrong with every man or woman that has walked this earth except for Jesus Christ. So, you know, we're just really going to be left with nothing. And I think that Dr. King would think that that would be a really big shame. 
So apparently my co-host for the hour after this one is kind of eager, so bear with me for just a second. <laughs> But yeah, I just, I think that it's pretty, uh, I, I just think that it's sad that we're in a position now, and I, and I do think that it's self-inflicted in a lot of ways, that there is a large chunk of the African-American community that actually thinks that this sounds like a good idea, and um, are convinced that this is the way things should be. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I've known people, I've worked with people that um, had this mindset, um, not always African-American, but um, uh, people of various ethnicities that have had this mindset. Um, they should only marry that kind. They should only really, really, you know, get involved with their kind um, that other people just don't understand. And it didn't mean we couldn't be friends, but it was like, Oh, no, I mean, that's like, I can go out with you on Monday, but like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm with them because they get me because we're the same race. And I just, I, I, I think that that is something that has been taught. That's not something that's actually, that's not something in ingrained in you. So the same way that white people were taught that, you know, African-Americans, uh, Indians, Hispanic, whoever were inferior or that um, they had some sort of, that they had something that made them less um, than the white white men. Um, th there seems to be a little bit of a regression here and that kind of going on. And it's not about being like less or better necessarily, but just like there's some sort of shared experience that um, is being taught is the only right way to be and to truly embrace your blackness, your Latina, your, I mean, whatever it is, the only one you can't really do that with is, you know, the white race. But everybody else, you know, is encouraged to do this kind of segregation and to keep it in the community almost and stay within the community. And um, I know that in a way it's trying to promote unity and pride, but I think it's also serving to foster some of this animosity with the other races and to, uh, to impose these self segregate, you know, segregation um, thoughts. So it's, it's really strange. I mean, all of it just seems like it's, you know, and again, maybe it is just because in some ways they just want their own form of control. Uh, but to me, it just all of it just seems like it's the exact opposite of everything that everybody up until now has fought for. I mean, because we just wanted we wanted people to realize that people were the same. And now it's like, well, it doesn't matter if we're the same because we still want our own money and everything. I, I, I don't know. It's just it, it all just it it completely blows my mind. To be complete, to be really just honest about it, because it, it makes no sense to me that we've gotten back to this point. I mean, th this was the type of stuff that was supposed to be over. I mean, speaking of over, we're just about out of time for the show, so I guess I should stop talking now. Uh, <laughs> why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you're not on the radio hanging out with me? Yep. Join me on Twitter at Jay Homestead. I'm always stirring up trouble and getting blocked by liberal blue checks. And then uh, I don't know why. I just say things to them like, you know, questioning their integrity or pointing out that they compare journalists to combat soldiers. But anyways, uh, find me there, Jay Homestead on Facebook, and check out MisfitsPolitics.com. We're actually going to have a post up tomorrow that is a cross post with the Gorgamons. And if anybody follows them, they know how hilarious and awesome they are. And so um, there's one that uh, one of them wrote for their site that we they have asked if we would like to cross post and put it on our site and share. So that will be really cool. So check out MisfitsPolitics.com. So a cross post, huh? I, I guess I got to go find those folks because I actually didn't know who they were. But I will go find Not them. Gorgon Moms. It's a one account, but there's six writers. It's usually only a few of them that actually access the Twitter account. But yeah, they've got they've got a site with you know where they all kind of blog on it on various topics and things. A lot of decent amount of politics, but um, they're all <laughs> they all have a lot of expertise in various fields. So they're they're pretty smart and pretty witty too. So, right. well, anyways. 
on that note, if you want to hang out with me, you can do that on Twitter at, at uh, Radio Host Rick. You can also shoot me an email at rick at klrnradio.com. And on that note, folks, we are out for the night. We will be back next Thursday. Um, and then, of course, I'll be back here in just about, uh, well, about a minute to do the turnaround and about six minutes for ads. So we're about, what, seven minutes? I'll be back with my guest contributor on Thursday nights now, Social Claude, who will actually be hanging out with me for the hour. I uh, hope you guys hang out for that. And if not, you can always catch it on the podcast. We'll catch you guys later. Take care.